The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, wrong video. Before we get started with today's video, I do have a few little announcements that I would like to make. The first one is me and my friend Amaya Janelle, our new book, um, Do Not Call Me Sis, is coming out on September 26th, and we cannot wait for you all to read it. Um, Do Not Call Me Sis is a collection of essays about fandom, massage noir, ableism, entertainment, and white feminism it's a nice little light read but it is also very informative and educational so we will be selling it as a paperback an ebook and also an audiobook because we want to make it as accessible as we can next um the waifu house is having a graduation event basically to celebrate their sisterhood and all of their accomplishments but they are in need of help when it comes to funding the event that they would like to put on so please help them out any little bit helps mind y'all i love these people they are amazing so yeah link to that will be down below all right i'ma shut up let's go ahead and get on with today's video Not to bring up my book, me and Amaya's book specifically, mm, Do Not Call Me Sis, there is an entire essay written in there that talks about like the issues with Sam Levison and his work, especially regarding how he chooses to portray blackness and how he views blackness just as well. Now, I specifically said I was not going to be talking much about Sam Levison anymore on my channel simply because I said what I needed to say in that book and you know when it comes out y'all can read it and form y'all own opinions. But this is something that I had no idea of until one of y'all, thank you by the way, added me on Instagram and it was basically talking about how basically Sam Levison is in women's business again. And this woman has to be Petra Collins. So that kind of like shook me a little bit, but it also makes a lot of sense because I am somebody that takes a lot of inspiration from Petra Collins' work. She's one of the people that I take inspiration for when it comes to my aesthetic and the work that I create overall. I'd say like visually and from like a fashion point of view, not writing whatsoever. But Petra, I'm not gonna sit here and act like she hasn't had a positive influence on my work because she has. And part of the reason why I was drawn towards Euphoria's like visuals is because they reminded me so much of people who make work similar to Petra and whatnot. So to find out that Petra was behind the entire Euphoria fiasco, it's disappointing but not surprising. So I'm gonna sit here, read to you guys what this is and I will be back with the rest of my commentary and y'all get some cute little art okay yeah all right hey y'all we have a little itty bitty problem so I went to go to the page that had the article interview with Petra Collins talking about Sam and HBO and all of that shit why when I go to that actual website that information isn't there is I don't know if it wasn't there in the first place or they took it out. So it low key kind of changed the direction that this video was going to go in. But my points honestly still stand because it's just kind of like an overarching issue. So yeah, I am going to read you guys this news. I'm going to read you guys what Petra Collins said and I will be back with the commentary. Director and photographer Petra Collins claims she created a whole world for Euphoria that Sam Levison allegedly ripped off and people are furious. Petra reportedly claimed that she worked on Euphoria for about five months before being dropped by HBO for being, air quote, too young and was left in tears when she saw an exact copy of her work produced by Sam a year later. You are inspired by contemporary culture phenomena attached to your main characters, your own generation, the millennials, gazing, emotional tears, masking, light at the phone screen where illumination faces, texting, and selfies were your main motives that appeal in your work of art. 
And have you had a major impact on contemporary culture? Not to mention the stairs euphoria, which is very much inspired by your aesthetic, in my shy opinion. Do you see the similarities or is it just digestic? I can tell you the truth about the series that was never told. I never talked about this publicly because it's a crazy thing, but basically the reason I moved to Los Angeles was because Sam Levison, who directed the show, reached out to my agent and told, I wrote a show based on your photos, will you direct it? So I moved to LA and worked to HBO for about five months. And I was like, I'm directing the show. I created a whole world for it. I did the casting, whatever the last minute HBO was like, we're not hiring you because you're too young. And I was like, fine, okay, thank you so much. They won't take my version of the show, obviously. I was so naive. They'll just do another one. So it was fine. I learned a lot. It was interesting. A year later, I locked out of my apartment and I see the billboard and it's exactly what I am. A copy of my work and I started crying. I was so shocked. I meant it happened to me so many times in my career, but not on a scale like that. It's so interesting to me because this is the aesthetic that I've built all my life and now I have to change it because it entered the mainstream. It's been taken away from me. The worst thing was is that people unknowingly saying this show looked like your photos. Already an experimental film in itself evoking from the aesthetic of 70s magazines. You used camera as a third person and perhaps the series you break complete aesthetics of your earlier work and enter the mention surreal. That series is an exorcism of me. I had to change my style because of euphoria. A lot of people started to take photos in that style and I haven't felt any more mine and I felt disconnected from that. I need to find myself again because I didn't resonate with this anymore. This was a big turning point in my life. The body of work I liked so much because I felt so disconnected from my body, from my work. I was like, how do I get myself back to my body? I don't do self-portraits. I physically need to hold a camera because a lot of my work comes in a camera. I felt so violent towards myself and my body. I need to create another version. It was very therapeutic and excited to place myself anywhere, photograph myself from any angle. That series was a starting point to create a newer style of photography for me. Honestly, this news about Euphoria allegedly being inspired by Petra Collins and take it from her is disappointing, but also it's not surprising because I was talking a bit about this and it's just something that's just been on my mind a lot this entire year where I was just talking about how should we even really expect so much from the professional film industry anymore because they're always like letting us down. But mind you, it was something that I said on my Patreon and I was like, the professional film industry was built off of three things in its beginnings. You know, the early 1900s and that was racism, anti-blackness, especially misogyny, and then anti-semitism i'm like the film industry was nasty as hell from the beginning it was always built off of bigotry so to see what the industry has involved with today and we are still seeing these overlapping problems it's disappointing but it's not surprising mind you who are the people that are involved with the film industry it's basically, you know, cis het white men. Those are the ones that are basically like behind the scenes of everything. Those are the ones that call the shots. Those are the ones with the money. Like y'all wonder Dave, David Zaslack and Bob Iger, you know, the people that we can't stand right now because of the freaking strike. Those are the people that are like the issue. Those are the kinds of people that basically run Hollywood. And I can't stand it. But also, like I said, because this industry is just full of such awfulness, I'm like, why is it that people are so hesitant when it comes to wanting to support independent productions? Independent, please. Like the indie market is low key where it's at, but the indie market is not popping the way it should be because you wanna know why? Money. Part of the reason so many people leave the indie art market or don't really give it that much of a chance is because they know the professional film industry is where the money is. That's where they're going to get the funding. That is where they're going to get paid the most and honestly not enough for their work. People will go and spend months and months and months of pitching a show to a network or a movie to a studio instead of going and making it on their own because they feel like they have a better chance of it getting made and finished or people actually watching it if it's attached to a big budget film production instead of something independent. 
So now that we understand the nature of Hollywood and what this industry is built off of, this is something else that I brought to my attention when I was talking about how there are so many problems with girly media because girly media, feminine media, you know, fe media that basically focuses on the subject of like girlhood and womanhood and it focuses heavily on like the subjects of fashion and glitter and pink shit is like everywhere. Y'all get what I'm saying? Has anyone ever sat and thought about how so much girly media, especially over here, Western, not anime. Anime, that's a whole nother can of worms itself. But have y'all noticed that so much of Western media that is girly, it is created by men? Like, has anybody ever thought about that and sat and thought about that? Because anybody that knows me knows that I've been talking a lot about the movie Jawbreaker. And I do have a video planned about the film Jawbreaker where I'm talking about the subject of represent representation and tokenism. Because I love the movie, but it does have issues with representation and tokenism. It's, it came out in the 90s, okay? Like, it's kind of expected at this point when it comes to watching older films. But that was a movie created by a man. I look back and I look at all of these extremely popular super girly things and see that men were the main people that were in charge of it behind the scenes. And I think the Pop of Girls has to be one of the most prominent examples of this because there are so many moments within the series that just get extremely misogynistic. And I can even say this with Dexter's Laboratory too, just as well. Like even just look at the way a lot of the women within these series are drawn. And I even throw out Totally Spies too, where I was like, that's a girly show, but it's so obvious that it was mostly men working behind the scenes of creating that. When it comes to the subject of men making girly media, feminine media, it's a very nuanced discussion because there's like a two sides to the equation. One, the main reason that we have men making all of these series and these movies in the first place is because, like I said, men are the main people that get a lot of these jobs within the film industry. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is, okay? And while they do get a lot of the jobs, there are a lot of women that work in this industry, but I'm talking specifically about the people that are the HBICs, the head bitches in charge, the ones that get to call the shots, the ones that get a chance at being in charge and most of the time when they do have a woman being the one that is in charge being the showrunner being the head writer and all that shit she's white so we have that we see that they are lacking in a specific type of demographic because you have to remember the film industry's main goal first is to make money and then second to entertain they realize hey all these cartoons out here, they're not girly. So we need to make a girly show. And instead of going out and hiring a woman to help them make this series for the most part, they'll just have men be the main ones in charge of making it. And while, like I said, I don't want to sit here and sound like an ungrateful ass brat because men are a big contribution when it comes to girly media. They are the ones that pitch these shows. They are the ones that got these series created. They were the ones making it. They were the ones that were like, yeah, this is a demographic that needs media and let's go ahead and make something for them to enjoy. While I do appreciate that aspect of it, there also are so many problems that come along with that because while yes, we are thankful, that doesn't really excuse the problem here at hand because somebody had said something and they were like, is it me? Or when you hate like a female like fictional character because she's like so poorly written and all of that, you turn around and realize that she's written by like men and I was like yeah most definitely that's like literally the problem because a lot of people were talking about this is the main issue with Sam from Danny Phantom and I've come around to liking Sam's character a lot more now than I used to because I used to have a big vendetta against her but I'm pretty neutral on here her now like I pretty much like her for the most part but so much of the writing with her character just came from the fact that it was she was written by men that really didn't understand her and I felt like this was a big issue with a lot of the girl characters within Danny Phantom just as well like the girl characters were went they were written with like typical misogynistic annoying tropes and then like a lot of the women in the show they just kind of like felt like accessories to like the men 
And as much as I love Miss Bellum, she is like walking male gaze, okay? Miss Bellum is one of the powerful girls, okay? Just in case y'all didn't know that. I feel like most of the people watching this video know who Miss Bellum is. So while I say that the film industry basically is like male ran, the only thing that is going to change this is if men that are like the main ones in charge of this industry, they start hiring more women with creating these series and shows and whatnot. But mind you, that's not even really the big problem, I'd say. Because let's say that there is a man that wants to create a girly show. Nothing wrong with that. But mind you, you're not going to fully understand everything and that's okay. I think it's important when you want to make a girly series, make sure you bring women in to help you out with that. Because that's the main reason why I praise Moon Girl so much. Because Moon Girl was a show created by men. But that writer's room has women in it. And you can absolutely tell with the way the female characters within the series are written all right especially the entire um storyline that had to do with Lunella and her hair and hair is something that is very very touching when it comes to the subject of you know blackness and growing up and whatnot and I really thought that episode was handled so well but part of the reason why Moon Girl is handled so well in the first place is because there are women specifically black women in that writer's room helping to make that show get to the best that it can be like when i made my video talking about does animation care about black women honestly a lot of y'all sat in the comments and said no and i was like it honestly doesn't i feel like black women care about animation but in vice versa it doesn't necessarily care about us just as much but nothing is going to be fixed when it comes to how animation treats black women until the film industry as a whole does a better job with how it treats women that's just what i'm gonna leave it on that note because i didn't want this video to be super long i just wanted to get on here and chit chat a little bit about this because like i said the sam levison thing like i said i didn't want to get on here and sit here and just talk about him but i was like honestly this is honestly like leading to like a bigger issue with this industry because i know when we sit here and we drag sam levison to hell and back i'm like nah y'all he's not the only problem he's just a reflection of the problem like with thomas astruck he thomas astruck is a problem when it comes to the film industry because people think they can like exclude animation when it comes to film and i'm like no it's just another section of it okay i know they have a different union guild all that shit i know okay don't be trying to tell me about this shit <laughs> But I was like, people like Thomas, people like Sam, Dan Snyder, I'll throw his ass in there too just as well. I was like, they're just a reflection of the overall industry as a whole. I know we can sit here and call out all of these little creators, but I kid you not. There's another Sam Levinson out here that is very more what, lesser known. There's another Thomas Asterisk out here that is a little bit more lesser known. And it just keeps getting swept under because, like I said, if we're going to start challenging the views of the film industry, we need to start talking about it more as a whole and not just like picking the finger at one person because one person isn't really like the main issue. It's like an overarching issue that's been going on for too damn long. But yeah, that's all I want to say. I'm going to end it right there. Uh, Waifu House donation, link to that will be down below. New book will be coming soon. Super duper excited to get that out to you guys. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I have merch, the link to that will be down below. I also have Patreon if you guys want to support the channel. And that way, deeply appreciate it. Uh, okay, I'll shut the fuck up now. Good night.